Hello everyone and welcome back to Meep Leaf Reviews. I'm Jeffrey. I'm Jacob. And today we're doing a before and after, which is our expectations and first impressions. Of Ave Roma. Yes. Now this is a game that we've actually talked about a fair bit on our podcast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was a Kickstarter that I commented on because I was very intrigued by it. So yeah. I ended up backing. It shipped, it arrived, and here we are. So uh, what uh, what intrigued you about this game? Uh, the variation on worker placement is the main thing. Where yeah. everyone has neutral colored workers, they're valued 1 through 5. Depending on where you put those workers, the value is going to change the action slightly. Yeah. And then at the end of the round, you're actually drafting those workers back. So you're not just getting 1 through 5 back. You might get all 5s back or some 4s and 5s. And you're going to try to do that in such a way that you're planning your next turn. So it's very, yeah, that, very thinky, I think. That is the thing that also drew me to this game is is exactly that. That, that twist on worker placement. Yeah. The thing that worries me with games that have a twist is, okay. is there enough gameplay to make that twist worth it? Like if they're just throwing out this mechanism that's cool and neat, but there isn't solid gameplay beyond that. That's that's where I always get a little bit nervous. So I'm intrigued, but then hesitant. Sure. Uh, so in this game, there's also there's set collection, uh, area majority, where you're trying to move up these different tracks. Yep. I'm not really sure about it. After reading the rules, I, it could go either way. I could be like, wow, this game is awesome. Sure. Or I could be like, no, I think I'll pass. Right. But I'm at least interested enough to try it. Yeah, I mean, there's so much going on. I think the first game is going to come across as very overwhelming. Uh, I think the first turn, having so many options, <laughs> yeah. you might just be like, what am I going to do? Like, yeah. I have no idea where to start. That could be an issue. I think it's going to, for me, it's either going to hit middle of the road or it's going to be awesome. Right. I, I really do not think this is going to fail for me. Okay. That's kind of my expectations. There yeah. are a couple things that I don't like about the game right, right off right off the get-go okay reading through the rule book uh there was i think it was written in hungarian translated into english there is some wording issues where i was confused the layout of the rule book where whereas it looked like they tried really hard to give like uh, awesome examples for everything and break everything down the way that it was laid out i was constantly darting back and forth in rule books trying to figure out how it worked i'd read through uh, two to three times to kind of get a good grasp on right. on it before I could teach. And it's not like it's super complicated either. No, the, the action spaces seem pretty pretty simple. I think it's just the wording. They tried to maybe over-explain it. Yeah, I think so that, too. When you try to over-explain something, sometimes you put in areas of ambiguity that then confuses people. <laughs> sure. So I think there's some, some things like in this rule book where it says to draw cards off the top of the deck, they explain that in a sentence uh, whereas I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, another issue that I kind of have is the round. Cir- it's a circular, giant circular board. Uh, things are kind of, at least on one side, they're they're rounded. So it's facing out in all different directions. Right. So you're looking at some things upside down, some things right side up, some things from the sides. I, I just don't like that feature. Right. But it's, you know, it's not game breaking. It's just... That's a, that's a preference. Right? I wanted to go back to something else that you said earlier about uh, the very first turn is going to be like, well, what do I do? Right. I think that's that's always a struggle in games that are so open-ended in yep. what you can do that the first turn, especially when it's your first play of your first turn, you're like, I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, what's important here? And then you, you then, might have a good you might have a good idea of what's important, but then there's multiple steps to get there. And then you also have because you, as someone who read through the rules, right. you might have an idea of, okay, I think I'm going to try this. Right. But someone who hasn't read the rules <laughs> and they've just been taught, I can see that's going to be, uh, what do I, what should I yeah. do? <laughs> yeah, their first action, they're going to just like look at the board, look up at you, <laughs> and just deer in the headlights and be like, well, where what do I do first? <laughs> All right, well, uh, shall we get it to the table? And yeah. then we'll come back and see what our first impressions of Ave Roma. Sounds good. We'll see you in a little be. bit. See ya. Welcome back, everyone. 
Meet the Leafians. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Leafians, not Meeple. There's no Meeple. Oh, so it's just no, but then they become used with Leafians. like uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> Are they Leafians? I don't know. They'd be confused with, like, the Levites from the back. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, welcome back. Welcome back. (laughs) We just finished uh, a two-hour journey through Ave Roma. Yeah, and it was, yeah, it was quite the experience. (laughs) It was definitely how we thought it would be. Uh, Starting off, never played the game before. You're going in and you're just like all these options right out the gate. Yeah. And you're just like, where do I go? What do I do? I what don't, does have, this a, I don't have a plan. Do again? What does this one do? Yeah. It was a little convoluted to get to get the ball rolling. Yeah. And especially because the iconography is so small. Yeah. The cards are minuscule. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so small. And they're littered. It's not like there's just, oh, one or two icons on there. Some of those cards have probably ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so many icons. So, just a little uh, background. We played a four-player game. Yep. Took us two hours. uh, And we played the basic variant of the game. Right. Uh, The advanced adds a little bit more, but I still think we got the experience of what the game Oh, with, for sure. With the basic. Yeah, you're not losing much by playing no. the basic game. The advance is just, I think, once you've played the game maybe ten times or something, <laughs> then you might want to throw the advance The in. rule book recommends one or two times. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt like towards the middle of the game, I was starting to, like, I had a plan. Yeah. And I was starting to put the plan into action and, and going for different things. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it took to about the middle, the middle of the game. I would also say that the first round, or the last three rounds of the game were probably the equivalent of the first round by itself. Oh, yeah. Like, it took so long for us to play that first round. Everyone's just like, okay, what does this do? What does this do? So, you could probably drop the game down to uh, 90 minutes, maybe even uh, 75. Right. Once you're once you're knowledgeable in the game and how it all works, we were clipping along at a pretty pretty good pace in the end. So what did you uh, what did you think of it? I really liked it. I, I really enjoyed this. I'm eager to play it again. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't so late, <laughs> I, I would be like, let's play a second round. Um, it was cool. And I feel like at the end, I was just like, okay, I kind of got the, the basic strategies. Because there's multiple. We all, did, we all took kind of different paths yeah. about what we were doing and how we played the game, some, which was some interesting. People, I, I like focused on military. Some some other people focused on like senators. Yeah. Uh, you went like just trying area to get, control, like area control with the different markets and yep. stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot. I think a lot of it will depend on what's available maybe mm-hmm. at the beginning. Yeah. To kind of see if there's a specific bonus that you can take advantage of or something like that. And knowing the cards is going to give you uh, a huge advantage as yeah. well. Uh, there was lots of iconography, <laughs> and we we're constantly looking up. Okay, what does this end in, end game scoring mean? What does this end game scoring mean? Uh, the normal icons were, you know, easy to pick up early game. You know, just like oh, yeah. this is the cost, coins, different resources, whatnot. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't, that was fine, but it wasn't end game hard scoring to, was a little more complicated. It wasn't hard to understand. Hard to see. It was just hard to see because <laughs> it was very small. Yeah, the cards are like the half sized cards. Yeah. And then the having like 15 icons on a single card, you're just like, well, what's going on there? Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it might not have seemed like it at the beginning. I was, <laughs> ma- I was making fun of the game. Right. Uh, but no, I, I think it was it was good. I'd like to give it another couple plays to kind of see if, if it's something that I'd want to, you know, put on the regular rotation that right. keeps coming back to the table. But no, it was, it was good. Yeah. Did you feel like the game was kind of balanced in the different strategies that we all took? Uh, I think it'd take a couple more. Yeah. A couple more plays to kind of see that. For sure. But it seems like... It, it was fairly close game. Yeah, you kind of shot it at the head. It, at the one of the interesting things about the game is like there's no scoring in the beginning. Yeah. Like once you get to end game scoring, then you just shoot up. Because yeah. I think no one was above... 
25 at the end of the game, 25 well, I th- points. I know, I think I was like over 30, so I had okay. half my points like throughout the game. Right. And I got half my points for end game scoring. Right. Whereas you got like 90% almost of your points at the yeah. end of the game <laughs> yeah. and only 10% throughout. So it can be misleading Yeah. Uh, who's actually doing well because, you know, it all depends on the strategy that you're going for. You're getting them in, in dribs and drabs throughout the game. Sure. Or are you going for that big end game score? And it's not really hidden information either. No. You can look at the board. I think like in the last two turns, you looked at the board and you were just like, man, Jacob's going to get a huge points right. here. And you started counting it out. And I was like, shut up, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking. I don't want people to know. Yeah. I, I think it's it's definitely one if you like uh, meteor euros, mm-hmm. for sure. Right. If you like Chuck and Dice or something like that, this isn't going to be the game for you. It is a bit longer, mm. but I think the time could be taken back a little. I think it will drastically cut back yeah. once you know what you're doing and once you're familiar with the game. Yeah, and once you once you get a little bit more used to the iconography, it being so small won't be as big a deal. Right. But it's, It is an issue, for yeah. sure, with how busy the cards are. But no, I enjoyed it and I uh, look forward to playing it again. Yeah, me too. All right. So if that's interesting to you, make sure you check out Ave Roma. All right. Well, uh, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Yeah, you can also follow us on Twitter at Meeple Leaf, and you can go to board game links by going to the description down below and clicking on that. Give us some love. Give us some hearts. All right, guys. See you next time. All right. Take care.